Welcome back to the semi-final of the System Open, not System Open, no, I've got it drilled in my head, I've done so many. <laughs> this is the European Championships in Poland, 2019. Uh, yeah, you've got on one side of the table, Kai Krupp, I didn't get his hometown, so I don't have that. Do you know it, um, Timo? What? Do you know Kai's hometown? Uh, Wolf in Bütte. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay. I can spell for you. I think it's a W. W. O. -O L. F. E. N. E. N. B. B. U with dots. With dots. Oh, of course, I've got the English keyboard. It. Right. B. Dots. U. T. T. E. L. T. T. E. L. Wolfenbüttel. Wolfenbüttel, Germany. Won't show up on that screen, but show up on the next screen. He's playing two. Inquisitors with fire control system and the concussion, concussion missiles, and the Grand Inquisitor with fire control system, concussion missiles, and sense. And Colonel Jenden with a jamming beam bringing up the rear, I guess, huh? Bringing up the rear will be will be the the, yeah. the rear guard. On the other side of the table, if you saw the last match, you saw him already. Juan Arrebola playing uh, from Galicia, Spain. Galicia, Spain, playing Darth Vader with fire control system and hate. Fire control system and concussion missiles on an Inquisitor as well. New squadron pilot with diamond boron missiles and the OS-1 arsenal loadout. And Colonel Jenden as well. So uh, there's some similarities between these two lists with Colonel Jenden and the Inquisitors. Hmm. Now what do I need to do? Uh, I need to sync these uh, shields and stuff. So that's all up to date. Yeah, and we'll switch over to the table camera as soon as I know that that's worked. And I'm joined by Timo Lars. Rob. Yes. Yes, your name is on the t-shirt is Lars. <laughs> Timo Rob from, from Sweden, right? From Sweden, you <laughs> told me. <laughs> <laughs> from Germany uh, to help uh, give me the personal insight on Kai. Uh, I can't give you too much personal no, insight of but Kai. We, uh, we already mentioned how Kai was the finalist in the first Coruscant System Open. Yeah? Yeah, uh, it was 2016. Yeah, yeah 2016 at the uh, Expo in London uh, for the Coruscant Ce uh, Star Wars celebration. Uh, we played against Peter Cook and lost. Peter Cook from Poland. Uh, so this might be his opportunity to, to, to gain vengeance on that defeat. If he can make it to the final and win in Poland. Yeah, to kind of reclaim that honor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that definitely worked for him, I would guess. Uh, anyway, so let's move on over to the table camera and see those lists on the screen and how they've got their opening deployment set up in opposite corners of the board. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of standard for a Lambdas to do that, right? Yeah, just to slow down a bit and oh, see what, what the opponent does. Do you know what I didn't do? Uh, I didn't set the timer. Let me double check what time. Timer. I did set my timer on the table, but I didn't set this timer. So yeah, it's not running because they're using the phone. Okay, I think. Lock on. The big daddy, the inquisitors, you know. <laughs> my. So what's your what's your take on um, Kai's list? It's a bit different, huh? With the three Inquisitors there as a team. Yeah. Um, he already played it at the Grand Championships last weekend. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think he scrubbed out there in the top cut. Yeah, no, oh. it's all right, mate. I, I'll take care of that. You just keep talking, <laughs> and I'll find the, the top place cut where it works. at the top 32, I think. Yeah. Or was it top 16? I don't remember. Uh huh. Um, so it's a quite tough list because you always have your force and debate mm -hmm. um, to dodge many shots and uh, pinch down a few damage into the opponent ship. So it's quite, quite defensive list. Yeah, it's, I can imagine with the with the three inquisitors and they rolling dice. We saw Juan's inquisitor in the last game basically take no damage while A wings were shooting at it. Of course, the A wings didn't take any damage anyway. But as it was, uh, Juan's list was able to put enough damage through on a couple of the A wings to be able to win the game and seal that victory. Uh, here, we've got several ships. I would anticipate we're going to lose very quickly the lambdas as they focus down the lambdas. And then, I think from the three ships on Juan's side of the table, he's got a slight advantage with the 
with the damage output as far as the, the missiles are concerned, the diamond bore and missiles. Uh, Kai's going to need to keep those Inquisitors spread out, not near to each other. Um, he can also get a lot of damage out through Darth Vader. Uh, so, yeah, it's... Um, on the other hand, Kai's Inquisitors, all of them with concussion missiles. That's not exactly... Um, that's not exactly something to be, to be laughed at. Yeah. yeah, I think it will be very interesting to see how the initial engagement will end up. Um, um, Kai has to take care of, of the... Is it a new squadron? Yes, it's a new squadron. But because again? because new squadron. the new squadron yeah. is, is one of the best blockers in the game. Uh -huh. Because of his slam action. Okay. Yeah, the dials are going down. Um, Imperial face-off here over on the other stream on Gold Squadron Podcast. They've got uh, Ashok Hemmings playing Republic against Piotr Kucharski playing Resistance. We've seen both play on the first Earth stream this weekend. Ashok's playing those two Jedis with two Gold Squadrons, I think it is. It's just one, I think. Just one? Yeah, okay. And uh, at Piotr with the Covenel. Finn in the transport pod uh, and Nien Nam and uh, Bastion. Lieutenant Bastion who I kept confusing with Tavson yeah I met him yesterday uh, on Thursday in the fifth round of Swiss yeah he's a very good player I yeah. can say he um, the, the story for this week from um, what? no it's Italian it's it's Piotr is Polanco Britannico but yeah, four nations represented here at the semi-finals. Uh, Spain, Germany, Britain, Great Britain, and uh, or United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, to use its full name. And Piotr Kuczarski is the last remaining Polish competitor to keep the home team's desires alive to be able to keep that trophy here. Now, um, what I was saying about Piotr is that Piotr... I met Piotr before. I met him in uh, January when I went to go stream the Use the Force uh, uh, tournament they had in January. Uh, he's from Poznan, from Raven Squadron. And, yeah, he had this interesting list. And I got to see it at round five of the hyperspace trial where he won. And that was his first um, win, his first, uh, his first hyperspace no, inv invitation to the World Championship. Oh, yes. And so nice. uh, on Thursday, we were talking about how, like, oh, wow, really cool. Now you're going to have to go get your visa and get rid and say And he said he already had the money saved up for the trip. So he was really happy about that, you know, because he was finally going to get to go to World Championships. And then since then, he's going to go undefeated in Swiss... And now through to the semi-final, so he's now 14 and 0 for the last three days. Yeah, that's and that's incredible great effort there from uh, Piotr Kuczarski, Kusia as he's known in the Polish community. <laughs> uh, but yeah, amazing effort for him to make it that far, 14 and 0, undefeated for three days in a row. <laughs> um, yeah, and and having gotten his first world's invite just a couple of days ago, and now within striking distance of having the flight paid for as well. They've also confirmed to me that the world's invites that you're receiving this weekend, that they are receiving this weekend, are valid for the next world championship if you can't make it to this world championship. Oh, that's a nice idea. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, cause I discussed because it's this, short notice, yeah. Yeah, I discussed this with them in, uh, at, the, at the Paris system open. I said, you know, like you're going to have the Australian system open and they've only got one month to sort everything out. That's not very really good. And they said, well, you know, we're probably thinking about having an overlap period where it's like after a certain date, you know, you can still use it to get to the World Championship that's coming up if you've got time. If not, then it'll be valid for the, for the next World Championship. So, uh, even if for some aberration, Piotr's not able to get a visa to travel to the World Championships in the next few weeks, then uh, he's still got the opportunity to make it to the World Championships next year. Do you know if they did it just for Euros now or for the Grand Championship that have been held in the last weeks too? Well, I would think... I. Uh, right, as I said, there's some sort of a cut-off date, an overlap period, right? Uh, there's some sort of a date where they say, right, from now on, the world's invites that go out are valid for the next and the next one after that. Yeah, it's like a, right, when that date is, I'm not 100% sure. I do know that, well, Vincent's told me that here at Euros, they're doing it. What's up, hon? What's <coughs> Did he have to burn up? Okay, 
¿En el Grand Inquisitor o en Vader? En Vader. No, mira, a ver, Vader tiene Fire Control System y Hate. Y me estás diciendo que no. Tiene Afterburner. <coughs> en lugar de Fire Control System. Y no, en los dos. Vader se va con Afterburner. No tiene nada de esto. Ah, ¿Y el último turno, el último round lo tenía bien o no? Vale, vale, va. Vale, vale, ya. Ok. There's a bottle of water around here somewhere. That'll be it, I guess. No, that's not mine. I'll get it for you. It'll do, though. Okay, so I got the list wrong. But I don't know how I did that. I scanned his list. Give me one second to double check this. Shit balls. Everything looks okay, right? I know what happened. I know what happened. <coughs> Yeah, the X-wing SHG is pointing out what. No, I know what, what, I, try, what I try. What I want to try to know. Yeah, what was that? What were you trying to know? Yeah, because, oh, because one of one of my four word rights I won last week in oh, the right, okay. Grand Challenge in Germany. Mm -hmm. So if it's maybe valid for next year, it would be nice. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, we'll get back to discussing this in a minute after burners. On Vader, and that's correct so yes, itself. Now, burners and no hate on Vader, right? Right. So, what kind of difference is pointing? Is that are you good enough to know off the top of your head? No, I guess. Is that is that your answer there? What? What sort of difference in points is that? Don't worry, I'll, I'll get there now. So, hate is worth. Or not. Hate is worth zero, and I had fire control system, which is worth two, right? Whereas afterburners are worth six, so he's got an extra four points on Vader. So in Luke, set it to 72, it's going to be 76 points for Vader, yeah? And that brings his total list to 76. Let's see, 76 plus 43 plus uh, 76 plus 43 plus 38 plus 46. Is that what that is? That would be. That's not right, then, is it? That comes up to 203. I'm gonna have to go pull his list off the table. One sec. Because what happens is, in the official squad builder, once you print your list, you can then change your list. And it changes on there. So when I scan the code, it brings in the new list that you've played around with. So let me see now. Okay, gender. No upgrade on Juan's side of the table. And that makes him 46 points. Gender is 46 points, right? Inquisitor with fire control system and concussion missiles. And that's 43 points, correct. Darth Vader with afterburners is 73 points. Ah, no FCS on it. Oh. No FCS. So right, of course, yeah. I didn't, I didn't take the, F I didn't take the, R the FCS off. Uh, the points. And new squadron pilot, Arsenal loadout, Diamond Boring Missions, 38 points. Okay, so now it's correct. <coughs> Right, it's all taken care of. I have to remember to give one his list back before he moves on to the final if he wins. Uh, yeah, so this is, a, as I said, um, I don't think it's 100% been set in stone, but they've confirmed it to me today that it was possible. They've probably got some cut-off date. When it would be exactly, I would guess last week, it would be a bit, a bit of a pain in the bum if it, cause if it was like last week. But then what, I know what you're doing though as well. I know what you're doing because you've already got invitations to this World Championships. You're trying to get next year's already, so you can sure. just you can just take <laughs> it easy for the next year. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. I would say, you know what might, would be my answer to that if I was FFG organized player? I would be like, no, because you're already coming to this World Championship. Yes. The idea is, if you can't come to this World Championship, then it will pass over. Yeah. Right. That would be I my think that, interpretation. That, that of will it. be the decision. 
Yeah. So keep keep an eye out, FFG organised play for Timo trying to pull a fast one on you. But no, all you got to do, Timo, is win the World Championship, and then you have to go back. Then they bring you back next year. I think not just next year. I think I think then you are invited Forever, all right? the time. So invited, yeah. but I think they fly you back for the next yeah, year, yeah. right? So you're like just defending, invited, think, yeah. 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 <coughs> Yeah, well, who knows? We'll see. But yeah, so I, cause my point was I said to them the Australian system open. That's a very short time to get everything ready. When is it? It's next next week? week. And so that, that gives them a month to work everything out from Australia. And I said, I, that's a really short time, isn't it? They said, well, yeah, well, what we'll do then is we'll have like a grace period or an overlap period where if they can make it to this World Championship, then fine. If not, it will roll over for the next year. <coughs> now I'm finished messing around I can get back to work so yeah Kai um, spreading out very wide with those three inquisitors and keeping those arcs pretty open which one is the grand inquisitor? the one that's got a black base marker yeah the one at the top the furthest from the camera the bottom one no the one at the top top one yeah okay, the, the one the furthest one. furthest from the camera yeah. Do you know what I've done? Have you noticed what I've done? I've put red, yellow, and black base markers on them. Yeah. For the German flag. Yeah, that's cool. Thanks. <laughs> Don't overstate it, will you? <laughs> Don't overstate it, will you, Timo? <laughs> that's cool, I guess, yeah. <laughs> the German flag, I guess. <laughs> it's all right. Uh. <clears throat> okay. And, uh, yeah, they're back... There's Juan now trying to work out what his best positional strategy would be for Vader. He wanders around the table to get a better look. Quite a big crowd at the tables. Well, yeah, I mean, most people are eliminated now or they've probably gone to hyperspace. They've probably lost a couple of games in hyperspace and dropped from there. A lot of people, I mean, like the top cup is 40 players. And now half of those have been, most of those have been eliminated. They're hanging around with nothing to do. Because I don't think you could jump to hyperspace today, could you, if, if you were eliminated? Uh, I haven't asked. Well, you were eliminated in what round? Top 30, top 16? I was eliminated in uh, top 32. Top 32. See, they should have asked you to jump to hyperspace if you were going to be able to. So uh, the fact that, that no one I, ever I said wouldn't have done to you, it. No, but they, they would have said to you if it was a possibility. They would have said, are you going to go into hyperspace? Uh, so I'm guessing that wasn't a possibility for the top cut today. That's more of a system open thing, you know. You get eliminated from the top, you can go into hyperspace. Okay. No range from the Inquisitor except for onto a, the other Inquisitor for a rock. Yeah. One, two focus results. Spends the focus. Let's do evades. So the same Inquisitor firing on the new squadron gunboat. He gets hit and focus becomes two for using the force. Two of eights. That's enough. Mm -hmm. Then one fell off the camera, but we didn't get to see it. But he had enough on the table. So you're uh, still not using a dice cam because Cause I don't like it. You switch now to that the players use uh, your dice, right? Well, um, I'll explain now. So it's uh, two hits and a crit versus three evades. Takes no damage again, um, and spent the force to do it. Well, yeah. Um, so 
obviously I knew I was coming here and there was going to be free streams. And, you know, sometimes when I let players use their own dice, I, I do run into the problem of, like, the black dice or the white dice or the, sh the shiny dice, making things a little bit more difficult. So today, this weekend, I decided just to eliminate that possibility. I was going to provide my own dice. And as always, including the bases, the damage decks, and now the dice, I always say you are not required to do these things. I ask you to do them. Okay, so I'm going to say to you, do you mind changing your bases? Some people say no. Do you mind using my damage deck? Not many people say no to that. One time, one time somebody did. But, uh, it wasn't really a big deal. It sorted itself out pretty quickly. And then, once again, do you mind using my dice? If you use my dice, it makes it easier for me. Yeah, man. So I said that people have still used their own dice this weekend. There's no problem with that. And for the most part, I've not really had too much of a difficulty. I just wanted to make sure I was able to see it properly. And like I say, once again, I said in the last game, if you're watching on a large TV, as long as those dice fall on that play map, my dice anyway, you can pretty much see what the results are. Uh, you don't need to have players roll dice in a very specific place. And I'd rather the players were comfortable to do things however the hell they wanted and not have to follow certain instructions that I've given them during the whole game. You, you know me. I've, this, is the, this has been my philosophy from the beginning. Yes, at the beginning of the game, I will harass you a lot to get things done. But then once the game's underway really you can kind of ignore that that all that stuff is to the side of you because it, you just play the game as normal yeah we play the game for ourselves not for the stream. exactly you don't have to think about where you're going to throw the dice you don't have to think about having to show your damage cards in the camera and stuff like that that's, that's the way i've always done it people have gotten into this mentality where they've got to show the card to the camera i don't need that i can see the card when it gets put in the place it's supposed to be and uh that's all i need but um yeah but that's not an issue but like i say i i, I try to make it for example, it annoys me when people show their cards to the camera because that's the one thing I've tried not to do. It's kind of like, you know when you watch TV or when you watch a film and when the person speaks directly to the camera or looks directly at the camera, it's kind of like this unnerving experience, you know? It's like, that's not what you're supposed to do, you know? You're not supposed to look directly into the camera unless it's like a one person speaking like the news or something like that. Normally in TV shows, like, people don't look at the camera and start telling you things. <laughs> and so it's just kind of like that sort of thing. I want people to realize that you're spectating the game and try and make it as close to a spectator experience as possible i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to inhibit the stream to do the, the players to do things to make it more comfortable for me more or less 50 minutes to 5-1 is what it is. Yeah, more or less. <clears throat> okay. Exactly, breaking the fourth wall, as uh, the self-help group are pointing out in the chat, is that uh, it's an unnerving experience. You know, it's kind of like I've always said it with the dice cam as well, where those, those big dice suddenly appear on screen and a big hand comes in. It's like, for, for hardcore X-Men players, that's normal. We're, we're, yeah. They're used to it. But like for the more casual observer, it's a really weird thing. This, suddenly this big thing appears on screen from nowhere and you don't know where it came <laughs> from, you know? Yeah, for the first time I think it's gonna be shocking. <laughs> <laughs> and when, I, when the first guy did it, and I'll tell you his name, the, the, the guy who did it first, uh, I thought that was, uh, nobody had thought about doing it like that. And it was a really clever idea. Uh, so I gotta go back through all my messages from the European Championships. I reckon it's after that. Oh no, 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 back further. No. Philip, Philip Mark Herbst was the guy who did it first. And nobody had really thought about doing it like that. And, and it was this thing where like a lot of us, a lot of those people that were streaming were kind of looking into ideas of how to get better views of the dice results. And I did this weird thing where I built this big perspex clear trough that they could throw them into so it was like they could still see it from everywhere, but it, it was kind of like localized. But um, yeah, but he did it like that, and it was like really clever idea using the chroma key to kind of keep. And then that was the other pro issue is that you, know, you can see me switching cameras and stuff like that. But having to switch cameras quickly to get that die results was a headache. And so I had to find a way to do it. It was constant. And yeah, he had it. Uh, it was constantly on screen. He didn't need to press any button. It was invisible when there were no dice in there. And when the dice get chucked in there, he could see it. It was a really clever idea.
So anyway, here you've got the um, Kai's Inquisitors being faced down by the new squadron Gumbo. And did he slam into there, or what was his action? I think the new just uh, went three hard. Mm -hmm. And his action, I think, just focus token behind. Oh, right, okay. Right yeah, wing. it's true. It's the right ring, so it looks like it's wing. ballooned. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so, I mean, one of the advantages to Kai's having, Kai having the Inquisitor spread out like this is they can kind of have that multiple pass... Um, where the arcs get spread out and now here with the yellow one he can easily move that one in he's coordinated a barrel roll to him to avoid the bump which means he's probably links to a focus <coughs> and then two banks to bump into the new squadron Yeah, just kind of takes a free turn to the left across the bit between the two ships there. And they're all, all of Juan's ships have target locked onto the Inquisitor, the Grand Inquisitor. You can hear me okay, right, when I talk this way? No, uh, I, I guess not, okay. Right. I, could, I couldn't. No, hear right, you so now all of all of announcements here, but. <laughs> yeah, all of Juan's ships have target locked onto that Grand Inquisitor. And all of Kai's ships have target locked. Vader. So mm -hmm. Vader takes a free turn to the right. The kid was following me around the whole weekend. So <laughs> so <clears throat> All right, so Inquisitor has not got Archon Vader there. Has to fire on the Lambda at range three. Check for obstruction, I think. Yeah. yeah. Here come the spaghetti arms. No less than four people involved. <laughs> And there you've got two focus results. Okay. So Jendon fires on the red Inquisitor. Hit and crit. And they're three focus results. Spend yes. an evade and takes one. I uh, spend an evade and a force token to keep it. Two blanks. Stays as it is. Now, eyes inquisitors fire back. Two hits and a focus. One of a 
bends the focus to avoid another. Vader out of range. Vader so out of range. It's so a well positioned there for Vader considering all those target locks are on him. It's completely taking away that action economy. One crit gets evaded. Uh, now the new squadron firing on the Lambda. Gets one hit. Lambda takes it. We have the first damage in the yeah, game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we saw in the last game in the last game with Juan and with um uh, I'm blanking his name on James Dowdle with the five A wings. Uh, the very little damage exchange throughout the whole game. And uh, yeah, now it's it, it looks like it's gonna be like that again in this time round. Uh, you, so you said Kai reached top thirty two in the German Grand Championships? It's definitely that he reached top 32. I don't remember if he made it to the top 16. Right, okay. Um, he had a bad swing last year a bit, so where he didn't finish in all the top cuts. Okay. Um, but normally, he's a very accomplished international player. Or, or in Germany, he's at minimum in the top cuts. Yeah. Um, we even have uh, a word for the, his uh, opponents in the final normally get Kai buys. <laughs> because Kai normally has won a region or something like that. And so yeah. the, his, the, the other finalist definitely gets the buy for the national. Okay, yeah. So these are called Kai buys by, uh, in, right. in Germany. Okay. Because he wins a lot he's, of the He's a machine. Right? Yeah, yeah he's, he's definitely very accomplished. He won that German system open the first year in 2016. And went to the Coruscant uh, invitation. Ah, uh, Rashta just said he lost in top 16 um, uh, at the German walk. Grand Championship last week. Ah, uh, Farmwalk won the, young, the, the German Grand Championship? What? Who, who won the Gra German Grand Championship? It was Manish. Manish, okay. Manish Fallharbor. Oh, he was in he Paris. He dropped out 3-3 uh, three and three or 4-2 and two in, on day 1B, I think, here at the Euros. Okay. Yeah, and then Paris he was top 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he he was one of the players that refused to go on stream. I think. What? He was one of the players that refused to go on stream. I should say not say refused. Our top four in Germany, he was on De stream with me. Declined, declines to go on stream. No, yeah, it's different depending I, I on the situation. I can understand it. Yeah. No, and I today, understand. Today the pressure on the stream is far too high. You have you have so many people interfering by anything, and yeah. now with the new floor rules, even if you do oh. something. Um, well, no. The one thing I'd say I have to say about that is that I've made it very clear. That, that my opinion is now obviously I'm not the master of the event but my opinion is that those rules do not apply to my stream because my stream is an unofficial stream okay. if you were at Fantasy Flight Games and you were playing on Fantasy Flight Games live then yes those penalties could be applied but I'm an unofficial stream I am not here so these floor rules don't uh my opinion is that these floor rules do not apply to my people on my stream Okay. Now we've not got into a situation where they had to do anything about it. <laughs> I've always joked whenever normally, someone normally it doesn't happen. Yeah, I've always joked that whenever someone swears, they're like, "Oh, that's two penalty points." <laughs> like, but they've never had to apply a penalty to someone for appearing on my stream and had to multiply the penalty by two. And I've told them, if you do that, then we're going to have words because you can't constantly say that you're an unofficial stream and you have nothing to do with us. And I have to say, I can't go. In, I'm not supposed to go in there. I'm not supposed to know certain things, and yet penalise players that appear on the stream because yeah. it's, it's, it's but, too. But still, playing points. on the stream can be pressureful. It is absolutely pressureful. A lot of players will tell you. It, even even in situations like here, where I make it as passive as possible. Thank you. Um, as passive as po this is because the internet connection is terrible. Uh, it's trying to update information to the internet and because it's not able to get it through it just bombs out um, as um, many players would as, even in this situation where I've tried to make the stream as a passive as passive of an experience as possible yes uh, everyone will tell you that it is uh, there is a lot of pressure involved in it they always feel the situation they know that they're co we are commentating about them they know we are saying things and I try to be as as amicable as possible even in situations where for example the last couple of games uh, I've had friends playing uh, this weekend 
Yeah, uh, and, and uh, for this weekend it was the time schedule between the games it was, was very quite tight. tight. Yeah. And yeah. then setting up for your stream takes a lot of extra time. A lot of times I jump the switch in the bases swing just to make things go a little bit quicker. Silver. Mm -hmm. To refuse the top four game, I think it couldn't be okay. But you shouldn't refuse the final. No, nobody ever does, eh? Nobody has ever refused a final. Uh, but yeah, that's the, the, this was the second time. And I understand it, and I've said to them all, it's, like, it's not a problem. I'm, I'm here, I'm a secondary thing, your game comes first. And if you're not feeling comfortable with going on stream, then that's not a problem for me. I miss out the game. In Paris, I had the advantage that I just turned around, the hyperspace round was about to start. So I said, hyperspace, jump on. And we had a game still. Uh, that was an advantage. In uh, Italy, I, I, I didn't have that advantage because they'd planned to send the hyperspace to lunch while the semi-final was happening. And so I had the two players um, decline the semi-final uh, stream and uh, that made it impossible for me to get any game in. But everybody's always said... What like, did you do then? Were you offline for an hour? I was offline for an hour, yeah. I, um, do you know what I really did? Just go ahead, Willie. I, um, I took the time to... Uh, here comes Willie. So yeah, um, I I took the advice to edit videos already. <laughs> I, what I should have done is 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 tweeted out what was happening. But as they'd refused to go on stream, I thought the best option for me was just to stand as far away as possible and, yes. and leave them to it. I keep saying refused. It's not the correct word. They had declined. And I have lots of players now who 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 don't want to go on stream. Ben Lee. Ben Lee, I was supposed to stream one of his games this weekend. I said to him, you're the, you're the European Championship. I want to try and get you on. And he was like, well, yeah, but he's had some very bad experiences on, on streams at World Championships, no less, where the Fen Rao debacle, where he, he, uh, was he took a console, uh, was it blinded con cockpit, damaged cockpit, pilot skill zero on Fen Rao on the first attack and completely destroyed Ben Rao straight away. Uh, and stuff like that. He's had some serious errors, and I think he w he went over a rock with Fen Rao and got a damaged cockpit out of it. I can't remember exactly, but anyway, he uh, yeah, he's got like a very bad history for the stream, and he's he always is always refusing to go on. Jack Mooney, every, Jack Mooney is a very nervous person. Every time I go near him, he turns white. Even if I'm just trying to say hello, <laughs> he's just like, do I have to go on stream? And I, no. <laughs> But yeah, it, it's, a, it's a situation. It comes with the territory, right? There's some people don't want to go on. Now. Now, they, they, they're trying to close in on, on Vader. But he's not making it easy for them. But they've got their arcs spread out, and even if he was to try, maybe try barrel rolling to be able to use the rock as more cover he'd still be taking two shots if he boosts I think he might, might be out of arc of the yellow one at the moment oh it could be close I think in the so yellow barrel one left forward would yeah. definitely clear that third arc yeah but it's probably best off boosting and then only taking one yeah, shot yeah he already right. boosted oh did he with okay. the afterburners right we have time yeah, so yeah, uh, he, and I think he's saying no. Moving the target lock to the Red Inquisitor. And looks like he's taking a barrel roll template. Let's switch over to the other camera so you can see. No, it's just focusing. Okay. So, uh, 
So Vader's going to fire on the Red Inquisitor then. Checking for obstruction. One hit, one crit, and a blank. And there's a focus. Becomes three. I say didn't use advanced target computer. Uh, two hit, two focuses. Safe. Yeah, safe. I'll spend the invade token. And Grand Inquisitor firing back on Darth Vader for a rock. Gets two focus results and a blank. And that's a hit. Spends the force to get free. <coughs> now you've got two evades and a focus. Spends the force. Force depletion. Okay. Yeah. Now. That's what you want on Vader. Yeah, Vader with no force tokens is made is a lot more difficult to is a lot is a lot easier to nail down. And also reduces his damage output for not getting those multi actions out every turn. One focus and a blank. Spends the force. And the Inquisitor, two evades. No damage there. Because the die was just on the edge of the, of the play mat, the judges were asking if it was necessary to re-roll it for being cocked. In that case, it wasn't important because he'd already evaded the shot. <coughs> two hits and a blank against two focuses. The shuttle spends the focus. And now the Inquisitors fire on Vader. And he's still in. Or yes. Yeah. Looks close. Then uh, check with the judge. So this is concussion missile, right? Three. Gets free evades. Range two. Yeah. And the lambda firing out the rear arc on the new got squadron gunboat. Two blanks, no damage there. Back to dials. And once again, virtually no damage. No. On either side of the table. Now here, you may be looking at the lamp, the new squadron gumbo already slams that turn. I'm guessing he's probably going to try and do once again a, a free bank followed by a free turn slam maybe. Trying to get face on with, the, with Vader to try and catch up with those Inquisitors trailing him as he comes along that board edge. I think that the free bank could be too far, maybe, maybe too bank. And then too hard it in to get this corridor between the rocks. You want to get between the rocks, right? Yeah, that makes sense as well. And that would help flank them as well from when they're following Vader. Oh. 
or just take care of the shuttle? With the, well, the, the the Kai shuttle with the new squadron gumbo, or what are we talking about? Yeah. I think I think Huan shuttle will try to hunt down Kai's shuttle now. Oh, okay. Maybe with help of the Inquisitor. I mean, the and shuttle. And just the bait. See, to I think run away and try to dodge all the shots. I think the shuttles are in a good position right now. They um they could even just be doing a zero stop maneuver, both of them. If anything, I would imagine um, Juan Shuttle maybe going one forward, but then he's he's putting himself right in front of that rock. No, um, I don't know. I can I can see Juan Shuttle doing a zero stop. Kai's would make sense as well, or Kai could just try to two bank into the right, slot himself between those rocks. But where he is, he's got that rock for extra evade, and. Facing that, I mean, like I say, it's not right now. The engagement for the lambdas is going to be between the two lambdas. The the, the inquisitors are going after Vader. The new squadron Bunbo is on his own. He, um, like I say, I can imagine Vader coming full throttle down the board edge, maybe using um, a barrel roll or something to get a bit more range. Whilst the new squadron gumbo, as you say, two banks and maybe even slams into the gap between the rocks right next to the, to the lambda shuttle. And then the lambda is basically lambda on lambda, so both lambdas would zero stop there. Maybe the yellow lambda might do a one straight and might just fit in behind the rock, but it's way too close and not risk worth. I can't judge if the one bank to the right would fit For between the rocks. Can't judge the oh no, I'm saying, I'm saying one straight one straight but it would come close and it's not worth risking losing the opportunity to fire on Jendon so he's probably and Kai's Jendon just wants to stay there he's got a rock to protect him if he moves forward then um, Juan's Jendon will have a f an un unobstructed shot on him and the shot was unobstructed all oh, right of course yeah Juan's shuttle is a bit yeah he's got that little corner that's a little bit further forward So the Inquisitor uses sense to see Vader's dial. And they didn't say out loud what the maneuver was. The new squadron turns to the right. So choosing to chase the, the, the lander then. It's the easiest point in that list. I guess, yeah. And Vader could try it could 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 outrun the Inquisitors from that position. But he doesn't have advanced slam on the new squadron, right? No, he's got um, the OS1 Arsenal loadout. Oh, okay. So he can. So uh, new, no relocation of the target lock. He can still use the um, the bar on missiles. But just on the Grand Inquisitor. Yeah. Yeah, with the target lock he's got at the moment. Like I said, Juan's Inquisitor and mm, New Squadron will go for the shuttle or try to go for the shuttle. Yeah. For Kai, I hope that he has dialed in the too hard or too bang. Wow. Fits. fits. Yeah. And that's a good position to be in. The Inquisitors turn to the right. Let's see what Kai can make out of the information he has from the sense. Yeah, because he, he could be trying to go for a block here on the five straight. I've said this sense will kill me. Yeah, so it, Juan says the sense is the bit that's going to make it difficult for him to win this game. <coughs> what Juan has forgot is to reach in force, but I think they will come to this when they come to the combat phase. You just regen on the uh, Inquisitor.
Okay, once Inquisitor does not block the shovel. Yeah, and he reinforces the front arc. Which works perfectly for him here. Boost now, yeah. Invader, five straight. Yep, easily blocks him. But right now he's only got one arc on him. So... He did manage to regen the force. Checking range from the two genders. Yeah, because at least range too. Okay, I think the judges have a discussion. They were discussing that he hadn't spent the force from when he used sense. Oh, okay. Three hits, damage goes onto the shuttle. Just one shield. And there's another hit and a crit and a blank. And that gets a focus. Takes another shield after the reinforce. So now, yeah, the Yellow Inquisitor. Range free. Focused against Darth Vader with one force token. Hit, crit, and focus. By control for nothing. Yeah. One hit and a crit. And there's two focus results. Force depletion and the shield. Force and one shield. Now you've got one blank and three hits. And there you've got a blank, a focus, and an evade. And force. Yeah, you use the force to make That's sure there's no damage. The Inquisitors. Yep. That bonus, that, that extra force for being a, a, a generic PS3 uh, pilot uh, definitely pays off. And they're back to the house. Just having that one token just regenerates every round, huh? It's, it, it's a big deal, like just for that one clutch moment where you can just regenerate. Yeah, that's an like, action that's not lockable, you can have stress, yeah. and you still have your force. And you still have that one force token to change one result, which can mean the difference between, between living and dying. And even the crit that is denying modifications and shots, yeah. still can use force. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, blinded pilot, huh? Blinded pilot, yes. you, you still get to use force tokens. As it is, and finally we've got a bit more damage on Kai's side of the board, but um, no real shift in any way, no points scored. Uh, less than 20 minutes to go in the round. And I swear, I see too many second edition games like this. But, but after, uh, with, after nearly an hour, there's still no real change <laughs> in the game state. Yeah, that 
will be a very very close game. Yeah, I think at least it's next really going to be the, seeing the Kai Shuttle will be halved. Yeah, maybe next round. Yeah, because that Inquisitor will probably K turn here, and um, Juan's shuttle is moving first, so could even just like slot in. Block. Yeah, slot in front of um, Juan, Kai's Jenden. Now he's got that clear path through those asteroids. Too straight. Veritable who's who of X-Wing in the background, huh? Right? I can tell you names of at least... <laughs> Eight people. Yeah, there was Kemi from Austria running through the yeah through the screen. We've got Krista, one of, one of Austria's top players. Yeah, Krista in his Australian or New Zealand shirt, where, whichever one that is. <laughs> uh, Marcelo Soto, Tony Fulgrim, uh, David Diev, Commissarien, and uh, Ekaitz, Juan del Rio. Can you help me? I can yes. see that. Alberto Nogales. Uh, okay, let's go. Nothing. Yeah. Of table cam. Anyway, uh, free bank to the. Right, and if he set up that block, then this would be a good place to just stop and stay. Yeah. Oh, is he slam there? Yes. Did he slam there? What? Did he slam with it? No, no, no. Oh, he oh. switched target lock so he can fire off his missile. Okay, so the target lock's on the lambda now, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, the Inquisitor does not cater on a sloop or something else. Just playing safe, risking nothing. Mm -hmm. And once shot was stopped, okay. Not setting up the block. Right, and here comes the other Inquisitor. I think Kai sensed again, right? Because there's no force left on the Inquisitor. Yeah. So he sets up a block again. Yeah. For Vader. <laughs> and this time, probably going to have two arcs: the Grand Inquisitor and the Inquisitor on Vader. Getting himself right into the position to be able to take full advantage of that block. That will be the boost focus uh -huh. to the right. Yep. Yeah, and just lines up those two. Uh, it's going to be range uh, one, range two from the Grand Inquisitor. But the, the Grand Inquisitor can spend that force token. No, he has no no, he's got none. Ah, oh, dear, dear, dear. I thought the yellow one moved first. Okay. okay. So I missed that. Reinforced to the back from the shuttle. Just trying to minimalize. Yeah, exactly. They're trying to keep himself input. on the ball as long as possible. There we have the block. Yeah. And it fits. <laughs> okay, locks in. Yeah, range one from the Inquisitor, range two from the Grand Inquisitor. I think both have rockets left. Yeah. Well, at least Grand Inquisitor has got the yeah. rocket left. And he's the got, they've all, they've all got him, one. yeah, they've all got him target locked. So 
So you've got one fo two focuses and a hit. Becomes free. And there you've got two focuses and a blank. So we have a force depletion and two shields. Yeah. Uh, shield and normal damage, right? Yeah. Shield damage card goes on. And half points go on Vader. So now we have one shot from the shuttle. Of course, this. Yeah, it seems to be range two. One Last hit. Last on Kai's shuttle. Done. And now to the interesting shot. Right. So the Inquisitor range one, okay. firing yeah, range, one. range one gets three blanks. No fight control system, spends a target lock. This is number four, right? For a crit and a focus. And, um, uses the force. Two evades. Wait. No, nothing. Hit break. Hit work, yes. No damage. Mm, Vader in, uh, in a difficult position. He's going to keep getting sense. He's got to try and find a way to get to a place where that Inquisitor can't nail him down. Spends the evade. Takes no damage on the Inquisitor. So the bait with Vader was a bit. It was a good bait. Yeah. But I think the sand at the moment. It, it's got him in a good position. He's going to constantly know. And um, basically, Juan's going to need to pull out uh, a, a very unexpected maneuver for Vader to be able to get out of there without being blocked between those two Inquisitors. Yeah. I mean, as it is, if that yellow Inquisitor moves a one bank, then it blocks off the one that the turns from uh, from Vader to the right. right. Yeah, being able to barrel roll to make sure, doubly sure that he's got that locked off. Uh, the other Inquisitor is probably going straight, and then we'll use barrel roll to try and block maybe the possibility of a bank to the left from Vader. Um, yeah, there's not much Vader's going to be able to do in this game now. And with Juan's Inquisitor and New all the way over on the other side of the board, Vader's kind of been left alone. Eh? That rear arc on the uh, on the Lambda is not really being effective. It's, uh, I mean, Vader's not really got any choice. Uh, there's no real place he can go that's not going to be blocked or brings him into asteroid uh, contact. Well, that's not many moves. No. I think the fast straights can clip that rock. We can then use afterburners to... Yeah, and we're going down to the last 10 minutes of the game now. So it could well be by the time, once Vader's dead, by the time Juan's able to bring the rest of his ships into the engagement, it'll be too late. It'll be too late to do any effective damage to change the points. Mm. 
No. Yeah. This, uh, I think this I is would where love to see that game in 120 minutes. So at a final. Yeah. So that it becomes more interesting when we have 45 minutes more time. Yeah, well, true, yeah, because, uh, I mean, losing Vader would bring the Inquisitor and the, and the new squadron pilot back into the game if they had more time. Uh, in this situation, it's not going to be possible. He's, he's going to lose Vader, and the Inquisitors are just going to hang around on, on this side of the board and force uh, Juan's gunboat and Inquisitor to try and get back across the board. There's not enough time for that in the, in the, in the eight minutes we've got left. Yeah. Three bank or two bank? I, I think it was two bank to the right, to left. Sure. Sorry, to left. Who's <laughs> Gordon coming in, trying to save Vader? Free turn, yeah. Probably going to try and move that target lock to that Red Inquisitor. Tries target lock. The Grand Inquisitor again. But he's not got range. Aren't they required to uh, target lock something when they. Ah, he used Jenden. Sorry. And then. Second Jenden charge. Yeah. So the new and the shuttle now have target locks on Grand Inquisitor? On the Grand Inquisitor? And Juan's Inquisitor just kind of comes around, but well, he might have a range two engagement on the Red Inquisitor. We say red, the one that's got the red donut on its peg. Have you thought about tracking charges in your overlay? I thought about it a lot, and, and I'm not. I don't want to do it. It's too complicated. Well, it could be. It's too, too much, much changing. It's too much. I, I already don't like. I already think I've got too much information on there, and I'm trying to reduce it. Uh, it would be too much, and it would be too much changing. It's kind of like the dice results. People talked about earlier on when dice results and having them appear on screen, but honestly, there's some games where the dice rolls are too are so fast. Just the amount of time it take me to try and put them in would just be ridiculous. So uh, it's definitely not something I'm interested in doing. Charges, there's too many of them now. Uh, there's, there's upgrade cards, there's pilots have got them. There are force tokens. Force tokens maybe because I know it goes only to the pilot. It's not spread all over, so every single card has it. Uh, but charges, it's just, it's just way too complicated. They become too busy on the overlay. Things are already messy as it is. I'm trying to reduce it with some of the stuff I'm doing in the background. Okay, well, thinking about, I think, mirror rolling, but thought that it won't fit to block Vader. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, there's not um, only f four minutes left in the round now and I would guess unless they get through this round quickly the game's over. Managed to squeeze a boost in there. And it fits. The 
Lando takes a two bank. Yeah, going as fast as he can. Wants to get out of there. Avoid the the missile from the um, the gumbo. Focus on the shuttle. Focus. To maybe dodge the shot from one shuttle to not get halved. So on the other table, you've got Ashok playing against um, Yoto's resistance. Um, so Jedi's against the resistance salad, as it were. Um, and against one of these two imperialists, what, what kind of a final do you think we're up for? Out of those options? I don't know the standards on the other, th on the other table, is, but I think if one of these imperial players wins best chance to stand. Ah. Uh, maybe against the resistance. Yeah. The best chances. Yeah. But I don't know if Ashok has do you put think, it through. What do you think about Kai's list versus the, the Jedi? Are it are these uh, Delta B Jedi or calibrated yeah, laser targeting? Yeah, Delta B I think. you have there or there? So what there is the if it's Delta B mm -hmm. It could be quite interesting because it's yeah. just two different styles on the Jedi. Yeah. And Kai can set up blocks with sense again, maybe? No. No. Yeah, so Vader gets blocked again. Uh, now they just have to check if Vader's blocked. Yeah, he's blocked. Ah, but it means there's no. Uh, the only person that's got arc is the Grand Inquisitor. Okay, let's see. And for the Grand let's Inquisitor see. to kill Vader by himself, it's going to be an uphill struggle. But I think Kai doesn't need to. He's, he's got the points. He's got to prevent losing yeah. points on Jenden. But it, even so, even if even if one gets points on Jenden, it won't be enough to equal Vader. Uh, one hit, one focus, and a blank shot. on the Inquisitor. Juan really spent the force on that shot. It's not worth it. It's not no, enough damage output. To can't have. It's not enough damage output to score points, so it wouldn't make any difference anyway. And he's got to try and prevent Kai from getting further points. Ashok has basically won in the other game. Yeah. Two hits. Fire control system for a focus. And there you've got three evades. Range three obstructed. Yep. Through the rock. And the new squadron can get the shot off on, on, on the, the Inquisitor round. now. So it was the last. Yeah, this is the last round. Two hits. Sounds like uh, the Ashok okay, game is finished. <laughs> Unless it's happening a miracle now, I think one lost. Yeah, I think one has lost the game. Maybe Daimon Boran missiles from the new squadron gumbo on the Inquisitor, but... No half points for the shuttle. Diamond Boron here. Yeah, Diamond Boron missiles fired at the Inquisitor. The Grand Inquisitor, I should say. Spend the target lock. Spends the target lock. Okay, so we at least will have another round. But well, they have so many shots. Yeah. That take time. Yeah. And two evades. Okay, so Kai through. Right. We have two finalists. Well, there you go. Thank you very much, Timo, for joining me. Uh, yeah. Always a pleasure to be with you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and I'm guessing... Do you slumber? Do you slumber? Ah, yes. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. I'm not getting any from it.
to his full renovation. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry, Juan. So there we go. Through to the final. At Shock Hemmings against Kai Krupp. Oh, okay. Thank, Thank you, you Timo. We'll see you soon. You're playing over here. You guys are playing on the first turn. Oh, I don't know. 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 I don